टेक गुरु आई जी ये क्या है ये कौन सा रिव्यू है नो जी and definitely not a guru i am just an ordinary tech geek just like you who enjoys watching tech today but your question was very valid my friend ye kya hai this is a massive box for a phone which should be ordinary size the redmi note 13 pro plus 5g super power super note so what do we have inside this is the strangest unboxing experience but let me share it with you <laughs> Here's the box, and there's the phone inside, in what appears to be a fish bowl. There's something fishy about this. We're going to unbox this and then figure out what this fish bowl is doing on the sets of Tech Today. All that and a lot more. I'm your host Ayush Alavadi. Let's begin your favorite technology show. The first. fish bowl that you've seen on national television but this has to have some purpose that's why the guys at Xiaomi must have sent this we believe in tech with a purpose so this is the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus 5G you have this made in india badging over here i'm get do i have to dunk this in okay you know maybe my producers haven't shared this with me because if you smell what tech today is cooking i hope that doesn't go in the final cut What I'm trying to say is it's very fishy what's happening on the sets of tech today. There's a 120 watt charger on the inside over here so that's fast charging designed by Xiaomi. Now, you also of course have a USB-C cable that comes along with it. What I want to do is figure out what the fuss is all about. It looks like multiple shades in this sort of a well, very glossy finish at the back but it comes in two shades. I can see a triple camera set up right over here there's a 200 megapixel branding above Redmi that means this also comes with a 200 megapixel camera well i think the real mvp is the ip68 rating conan gorilla glass victus protection but ip68 on a smartphone which is under 35000 rupees unheard of and that's why i'm not too stressed about dunking this device here we spoke about the mediatek dimensity 7200 ultra 5g chipset it's a flagship 4 nanometer architecture the phone comes with a 120 hertz 3d curved amoled display there's an in display fingerprint sensor it comes with a 120 watt hypercharger in box a 5000 mah battery that means a 0 to 100% charge in under 19 minutes and the big big feature is ip68 dust and water resistance now in terms of brightness of the display it gives you nearly 1800 nits of peak brightness and on a normal day it's around 500 nits of brightness now this is a 200 megapixel triple rear camera an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle and a 2 megapixel macro you know what xiaomi says is if you put this under water and it's clear water of course here in mumbai we do have clear water and you place the phone with a video playing under water one you can test the ip68 water resistance not waterproof and i'll get to that and two you can see how crystal clear their display is so one of our favorite moments from 2023 the same camera team the same anchor over here was when tim cook graced tech today and we've got this playing in full hd i'll just reduce the volume so that there's no resonance inside and we have the video right here let me dunk it in there and see what it feels like the enthusiasm uh i'm excited about all of those things so we've dunked the phone and this exclusive interview is playing underwater to an other population altogether and honestly it is crystal clear but ip68 water resistance if you're talking of an iphone or a samsung s23 ultra or soon to be an s24 ultra or even their foldables if you come up with an ip68 water resistance a lot of expensive phones do not certify that now does that mean these companies would uh, cover this in their warranty if there was any water damage no they wouldn't so what you need to do is be very careful it's not waterproof it's 2024 now and waterproof phones still don't exist you might need to have a pouch or a bag it's water resistance this is water resistance and why it's a big deal is cuz this phone is definitely half the cost of a standard iPhone 15 
it's coming to a phone like this and why is it a big deal in this sort of mid-range or affordable smartphone market because every time you add ip68 water resistance right up there with the flagships you're adding nearly 30 percent so the cost of your smartphone was 10,000 rupees adding ip68 water resistance getting that certification and then selling in the market would mean that the cost would go up to maybe 13,000 rupees or 14,000 rupees now that's a massive amount especially when it all adds up and you're considering what the consumer is paying in a very price conscious market so the interview is going well this is one of our highlight moments of 2023 i'm going to take it out either way and just see how it all sounds the speaker is still working it's blowing out some of the water you know what very very impressive now these were only our initial impressions of the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus. The full review will be coming across Tech Today's platforms very soon. But for now, an underwater test already conducted in our favorite fishbowl now on the show. I think this is going to become our resident favorite very soon. We're going to use this for all sorts of cool things, even dunking our GoPros and whatnot. But we'll see you in the next segment until I dry this out. So I'll see you very soon. <laughs> On Tech Today, across all our platforms, we cover so much technology, business, auto, lifestyle, that sometimes we think we know it all. And all of that theory doesn't always translate into practice, especially if even us tech geeks get complacent. And what if I told you that for 35 rupees, Google will tell you about where all of your data is compromised? Well, it's not that simple. It's a slightly long and circuitous process, but I can tell you that a Google One subscription, which is selling for 35 rupees right now, I'm sure they'll scale it up in a few months. But using that, you get a bunch of features and advantages, especially for all your tech profiles. Tech Today's Danny DeCruz was using Google One subscription and found out that a lot of his data has actually leaked on the dark web. So here's some useful tips from Tech Today's Danny DeCruz about making sure your data is safe and secure. We all have heard about instances where people have lost lakhs of rupees to scams and even their personal information like email IDs and passwords to data breaches. But more often than not, we just read these reports and then shrug them off thinking we'll never be a victim of these. Unfortunately, that's not always the case and I found that out the hard way. Now before I tell you what happened to me, let me try to explain how this tool is used to find out if you were a part of a data breach. Now, it all started when I got to know that WhatsApp chat backups will no longer be free on Google Drive. Now, Tech Today has extensively covered this aspect. So if you want to know more about the new policy on Google Drive, please head to our website. When I got to know that the chat backups are not going to be free, I had to purchase a Google One subscription service. Now, what's Google One, you say? Well, Google One is a subscription service where you get cloud storage, where you can save your photos, your videos online so that you can access it anywhere across platforms. Now, Google sells this service at a price. Now, the current price is just rupees 35 per month but that's a promotional offer and this price will only be limited for the first three months. Now let's talk about the feature that we all are here for. It's called dark web monitoring. Essentially what this feature does is it tells you that your critical information such as your name, email ID, date of birth, passwords have been leaked to the dark web. Once you have purchased a Google One subscription, you can head to the main page and there you will find multiple tools and aspects to it. The first is storage and then you can see your current backups and even clean up some space from your Google Drive. Now, there's a fourth option which is called the dark web report. All you have to do is click on it and then you will be asked some information such as your name, your date of birth and your phone number as well. So all you have to do is confirm it to Google and then you'll have to hit search. 
and once you allow it to search your data on the dark web, you can see all the results. Now say you found out that your data was part of a breach, what can you do? Well, Google has a few suggestions for you. To find those out, all you have to do is click on that very instance and then look at the data that was leaked and then you can find out suggested next steps where Google will tell you what to do. The results of this tool were shocking to me, but all we can do is learn from it. So just be vigilant when you're online and stay tuned to Tech Today to see all the tips and tricks to stay safe. Now it's time for my favorite segment on the show, where I get to answer all your queries. Basically, the team goes through everything that you guys have been writing to us on social media and then picks out a couple of them that we can feature on the show. So keep writing to us on our social media handles. But for now, our first query comes from Swati Singh, who asks, saying, is Elon Musk coming to India in January? Now, this is a very relevant question, Swati. Everyone was talking about Dua Lipa here for the New Year's, but Elon Musk, according to multiple reports, might be attending the vibrant Gujarat summit, which is happening on Jan 10th to Jan 12th. Now, why is he here? Well, reports suggest, and what they've told us here at India Today and Business Today also suggests that Elon Musk will be announcing the setting up of a new manufacturing facility in Gujarat for Tesla. Now, there's also several reports we've seen through the course of 2023 talking about other locations, maybe in Maharashtra or somewhere else. But tech enthusiasts will be watching this development with bated breath. That's if he or someone from Tesla makes an announcement at this iconic event. What does that mean? Well, look, Maruti Suzuki already has a plant there. There's talks of them working on an electric vehicle in the Gujarat facility, MG which has a bunch of EVs already, very popular ones in India, also has presence in Gujarat. Now, is it the business environment or how there's so many, well, startups and companies setting up in this gift city and in and around all the access to ports? Those are all the business analysis questions. As tech enthusiasts, we are excited if that's the case. So we'll have to wait till Jan 10th or 12th because honestly, when it comes to Elon Musk, well, anything can happen, what we should do is expect to googly as well and expect some good news, be optimistic. But we have several questions. And if he's watching, number one, will the Model 3 and the Model Y come first? What about the Model S Plaid? Will the Cybertruck ever come to India? Is there a use case for India? Are there India-specific announcements? Will the cars be any different from the ones we've tested on Indian roads, which were actually fully imported cars? How much will they cost? There's also reports on Tech Today and Business Today where we've seen that there might be a concession for fully imported cars, Teslas, at 15 to 20%, much lesser than the 100% duty which currently applies to imported cars. What will other EV makers that are already doing really cool things in India have to say about that? These are questions for which we need answers. But for your question, that's a long answer to tell you that let's wait till Jan 10th and hopefully for an announcement because all of it would only be good news for us tech enthusiasts. Well, since we're speaking so much about Tesla and Elon Musk, here's the question which can really tilt the tables in someone else's favor with Xiaomi's new SU7. And Kapil Tomar asks saying, what do you make of Xiaomi's new electric car? Yes, this is Xiaomi's much awaited electric car with acceleration and speeds of a hypercar. Honestly, it looks amazing. But it seems like a China only product, so maybe we won't see this anytime soon around the world. But if you go by the looks of it from the front, with the way the lights are really spaced out, looks like a McLaren from the back, like a Porsche or a Tesla, zero to 100 in 2.78 seconds. That's even slightly faster than a bunch of Porsche cars. Now, we're talking about Tesla Model S Plaid territory. 2.78 seconds is unreal. And that's what they claim this car can do. Remember, a lot of people around the world have tried to make an EV. James Dyson, inventor extraordinaire. We spoke to him in Malmesbury, and that was the one thing he didn't manage to do, even though he invested millions of dollars and pounds in that particular EV project. Maybe he'll come up with one soon again. We have Bhavish Agarwal talking about one here. 
with Ola in India, but Xiaomi has done it in China. The car looks amazing. Like I said, some great specs. Like a lot of futuristic EVs, there's not much happening on the inside. There's a central console and a large central touchscreen. It comes in three colors, aqua blue, mineral gray and verdant green. Now, reportedly, the car will come in two variants, the rear wheel drive and the all wheel drive. The rear wheel drive will be able to hit speeds of up to 210 kilometers per hour. And the dual motor all wheel drive, wait for it, will actually will have twice the power at 673 horsepower and will actually be able to hit speeds of 265 kilometers per hour. Mind boggling stuff. If this car ever makes it into India, it's definitely going to be something that will grab a lot of eyeballs. Maybe we'll see more at CES or at MWC, but for now, the car has been revealed. It's got stats and specs which will make nerds and auto enthusiasts really stand up and take notice and it looks really good. Now they're calling this EV the SU7. Now I don't know if there's a Pro, Max, all that kind of stuff, but the SU in that badge stands for Speed Ultra. Now it's not just that top speed that I told you about, 0 to 100 that can make a Porsche stand up and take notice. It's also with the charging times and more importantly the range. Now, the model that they've showcased for 2024 has a range of up to 800 kilometers. That's almost Mercedes EQS territory. So what does that mean in the real world? Obviously, we'll have to wait and see to watch a bunch of reviews. Maybe when we're traveling next on Tech Today, we'll have a look at it. But they're also planning to come up with a long range version in the coming months, maybe in 2025, which they say will be 1200 kilometers on a single charge. So if that ever happens and they do it before BMW and Mercedes won, I think the Germans will really have to reassess what they've been doing with EVs. More importantly, they will set a world record and end that term, completely obliterate what people call range anxiety. Because if you get 1200 kilometers in the real world, even eight or 900 kilometers on a single charge, I don't think range anxiety is a thing. With these charging times in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, supercharge, EVs are definitely the future and we'll always be covering them here on Tech Today. A lot of people have been saying 2024 is the year of tech, but then they say it's all about AI, mixed reality and stuff like that. What about smartphones? Well, if you thought it's not going to be about smartphones this year, then let me correct you. January 2024 is starting off with a bang. A bunch of flagships, so many launches, it's actually raining flagships in 2024, right at the beginning. And it all starts with Samsung Galaxy Unpacked. Like Techtober is a big deal in the Apple ecosystem of things. What if I told you that Samsung is holding Galaxy Unpacked, not in Korea, not in New York, not in Mumbai or London, but right in Apple's backyard in San Jose. Now, Tech Today is going to be bringing you the latest developments from Galaxy Unpacked, but what can we expect? Well, here's a special report. Samsung will be hosting its flagship event, Galaxy Unpacked event, on January 17th, one month prior to its usual timeline. This time around, the company will launch Galaxy S24, Galaxy S24 Plus and Galaxy S24 Ultra. The Korean tech giant will host this launch event, not in Seoul or New York, but wait for it, in San Jose, Apple's backyard. It looks like Samsung is clearly making a statement here with its decision and is quite ready to lock horns yet again with arch rival Apple. This time, the two tech giants are fighting for smartphone supremacy with not only hardware upgrades, but also by ushering into the new era of AI phones. Yes, Samsung has now announced new AI features for its Galaxy S24 models that will take on flagships like the Google Pixel 8 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max. According to CounterPoint Research, more than a billion smartphones with built-in generative AI are expected to be shipped by the end of 2027. In terms of design, the Samsung Galaxy S24 series is expected to come with bigger and brighter displays. One big highlight here though is that the Ultra model is likely to come with a titanium build for better durability just like the iPhone 15 Pro Max. As for the performance, Galaxy S24 is likely to be powered by Exynos 2400 chipset while the Galaxy S24 Plus and Galaxy S24 Ultra are expected to be powered by the latest flagship 
chipset from Qualcomm, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, much like the OnePlus 12 and iQOO 12. Now, the biggest selling point here for Galaxy S24 series seems to be its new AI features to give tough competition to other market players. Samsung is expected to introduce on-device AI processing uh, to reduce reliance on cloud for faster and secure output with features like live translate that will offer real-time translation. This feature now could prove to be a game changer in the increasingly connected world where we live in uh, currently, where likes, comments, retweets, shares have all really become a social currency of sorts. Samsung is also expected to offer a generative edit feature that will allow you to move around the objects in the image and edit it more effortlessly. A generative image model that can easily generate and edit creative images as well. It can make style changes and additions and also convert low resolution images to high resolution. While this sounds quite similar to Pixel 8 Pro's Magic Editor, but we know that more details are yet to come out. Once the feature is officially announced, then we know more. One important thing that Samsung has revealed already here is that these AI features will need users to have a Samsung account and a Google account. Also, some of the features mentioned above will need a stable internet connection. So it's not like all the AI magic will take place offline. In fact, in terms of camera, Galaxy S24 and Galaxy S24 Plus are all expected to house a 50MP primary camera housed in a triple rear camera setup, while the Ultra model might just come with a 200MP primary camera nestled in a triple rear camera setup. All three models are likely to feature a 12MP selfie camera. As for the battery, Galaxy S24, Galaxy S24 Plus and Galaxy S24 Ultra are likely to be equipped with a 4000 mAh battery, a 4900 mAh battery and a 5000 mAh battery respectively. While we are yet to see which smartphone brand will come out on top this year, one thing's for sure, AI is poised to play a big role indeed in our smartphones in the future. Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates and Google CEO Sundar Pichai even believe that generative AI technology could be monumental as the dawn of the smartphone and the internet itself. For now, all we can do is wait for Unpacked on Jan 17th and safely say, let the AI games begin. So while we are really excited about Galaxy Unpacked here on Tech Today, there's a bunch of other flagship launches and mid-range smartphones as well through the course of January. Even the guys who made the OnePlus Open, one of our favorite foldables, are also coming out with the OnePlus 12 and 12R. Now that's going to be a launch we'll be tracking on Tech Today as well. But if you're in the market for a new smartphone, you're thinking of upgrading and maybe you're not an iPhone person, then January is a month where you need to well consume Tech Today content across all our platforms and make sure you make an informed purchase decision. So we're coming to you, the Tech Today community, to ensure that you don't make any mistakes, figure out what's on your wish list, and maybe help you make the right purchase decision. Here's a Tech Today special report. If you're planning to buy a new smartphone, then wait. January is going to be the biggest smartphone showdown ever. We have smartphone launches like Samsung Galaxy S24 series, OnePlus 12 series, Redmi Note 13 series and so on. Let's speak to some of you as we kickstart 2024. Are you aware that there are so many flagship launches happening this month? Which specific category or specific brand are you more excited about? Apple. Samsung 24. Samsung Fold. I am excited about Samsung, uh, especially the S24 series. I like iPhones. OnePlus. If given a situation that you don't have to pay for any of these smartphones, which brand or which smartphone pr will you prefer? Yeah, only then uh, Samsung Fold. If I was supposed to pay, then iPhone. OnePlus. You are a big Apple fan, I am guessing. Uh, yeah. A specific reason why? Because I've been used to it. What about from these three brands? Redmi, Samsung and uh, OnePlus. If Fold is not an option? Which phone will you prefer? One Plus is great. I have used it before, so it's nice. Samsung. Definitely Samsung. Or I would love to think about One Plus. Don't you think it's a little pricier? If price was no bar, would you still want to buy it? 
Yes, old version of Samsung. They are brilliant. Samsung is bringing AI features. Are you uh, aware of it or you know interested? No, we'll see after <laughs> using it only. So this is what Delight's saying about the new smartphone launches. January is definitely going to be a really interesting month for all the turkeys. Over to you, Ayush. Well, 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 yet another action-packed episode of Tech Today draws to a close. We hope you've enjoyed the show. If you have, or in case you haven't, do let us know across our social media. Give me a DM and we'd love to hear how we can make your Tech Today multimedia experience even better. There's so much happening in the month of January and across 2024. So you've got to stay tuned to all our platforms to ensure that you are abreast of all the updates from the world of technology, auto and business. I'm your host Ayush Alabadi saying thank you so much for watching. Until next week, adios.